Hello there! Welcome again to me creating D&D maps in the process that goes through it, fully unedited and all of the crazy stuff that I tend to spew out in the meantime. My name's AK Games, and today we're going to be doing the top right, or the northern, northeasternmost corner of the castle. As you can see here, I've done a lot of the groundwork already, got the walls built around, I loaded the previous map, deleted all of the items, the usual second floor shenanigans, trying to keep the same layout. It is, again, 25 by 25, just in case people forget. Uh, it will be slightly different from the interior. I didn't want the interior to have the thinner wall to the north, because you won't be seeing outside it so much. Uh, outside, you will need it, so the scaling will be exactly the same, but you'll notice that there'll be more of a top layer on the top side. Probably, as you probably already noticed, from the middle north map. That should be connecting over here to the left. Now, for this one, it can be as simple as we can put another tower right here, receded tower into the back, uh, to a little bit more storage, maybe another part of a garrison in here, to just having nothing, which would be kind of defeating the purpose. So I believe what I'll do is, is that I will leave a... Uh, recession into it having a uh, maybe a interior tower kind of situation helping to overwatch as they come into the area players would be able to use this location to thin out numbers maybe use this as a pure battle standpoint no complications just straight up fight 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 uh, use this as a passageway you're having to pass between the important areas for example You've got the uh, bottom right and the bottom left. Bottom right being you need to get the siege cannons where they need to go. You need to get the ballistas where they need to go. You need to get the ammunition where it needs to go. So you're using this as a choke point. They don't know what's around this corner. They hear fighting all over the place. Could leave them a little surprised. Maybe like a little mini boss fight here. Maybe a group of enemies have come in. So they're having to prevent the ballista from being destroyed while pushing back the invaders off as more reinforcements come in. All sorts of things you can do with this, but they, it's more of a passageway. Think of it like a hallway. A hallway is not just an area to walk through. It's an area where you have, you can go through over and over and over again, and every encounter will be different one way or the other. So with that, let's go ahead and do a large fill for the most part. Get that thinned out. Probably one more. And go up. That way I can have this large square area. Speaking of which, go ahead and crop that out. Keeping it clean, so to say. It's going to be a, a receding stone tower. Uh, a little bit different than what it's exactly used to. Now, we will need some stairs, and now, what's some good stairs? Uh, there's not really a lot of great stairs for this, uh, especially considering they are larger. I believe this will work for now. Uh, having one of the two, of the two, and then with that, we can just do that, do that. I'm going to have to remove the edge as well. There we go. So, it, it, it's seeing, denoting that it is being on the tower side. Uh, keeping to the edge. Yeah, that'll be fine. Don't exactly have to do that with the roundabout. Uh, keeping them. Hold on. Eh, I guess we'll have to do this side. We'll not be doing all of it. Uh, denoting that you'll be looking at it slightly at an angle, having a little bit more space on this side compared to this side. A little bit of overhang, uh, it is the back area of the wall compared to the open area. So, we're gonna need those arrow slits for sure. They will be placed every other, as per usual. Going, going, going. I need the... Buckets of arrows. These are going to have to be placed. Uh, they're a little bit off kilter, but this is fine. Randomization. Randomization. Keeping, um, keeping it going, keeping it going. There we go. Now, we're going to need the uh, ballista. 
Nah, not it's two L's. Yeah, it's two. Two L's. Uh, I keep forgetting that. Keeping with the traditional, just over two. Gotta crop it up. Now this would be a little bit more difficult to try to place. We'd have the corners are hard to put the ballistas into because I mean you can turn them and do all that fun stuff you really want to do with it, but it would be hard to get around. But I think I'll do it anyways. Uh, that is one, two off the center. That is, okay, so just one off the center. So, there we go. Keeping it exactly as such. Having it in the end. Uh, they would have probably some ammunition stores, and I did like that chest-looking kind of thing earlier. Uh, whoop, didn't mean to add that in. Uh, maybe it may be a small store of ammunition. Not exactly a large store medium. That's three. There we go. Bolt. Ballista bolt. Making sure they line up. Yep. And just uh, doing a nice little clean stack. Just doing stuff that we've already done before. For the most part. Mm. Having them placed pretty good around. Placed up and down. Maybe one more. There we go. Stack of bolts. Uh, for maybe they need to do some curing in this area. There would be a small supply. You wouldn't immediately have them all over the place. Uh, it'd be constant fairing back and forth. Uh, there'd probably be, again, uh, some relaxation table area. But would it really be relaxing? Probably not so much. Let's go with wall tables this time. I'm placing it there and there. Uh, barrels of water. Yes, yeah, so you need to go down. There we go. Uh, we'll need a few barrels. Hmm. Placing them. Um, denoting maybe the variety is needed. Going with, again, the fire situation. Fire is always fun. It's always fun to have uh, one of them being on fire constantly running back and forth. Uh, security wise, you would need the pillars of stone, make, uh, particularly on the larger side, denoting diagonally across, maybe there as well, giving it some severe structural integrity to the area. Keep, again, keeping it out from the middle, so that way a player can occupy the space. If you put things in the middle, for example, players can't occupy, they could probably occupy these corners here around the ballista. They have to be careful of the string, however, which means they probably, every time it fires, dexterity saving throw. They want to fight in that space. Just to avoid the slap of the ballista ropes as they recoil back, or the recoil of the uh, bending wood arcs from the bow part. Recoil will hurt. Recoil will hurt a lot. Now... As for the rest of it, I mean, we're just about done on this, aren't we? There's not really a lot to say. There's not a lot to do here. But we can look around for a little bit. There's not really going to be a lot. Uh, it'll be a bit of a short episode. Again, this one and the next one. You know what? I think I'll just make this a double one. Why not? Go ahead and just make it as we go kind of thing. You never know what you're going to do. I will... I will probably just keep this map. And say it is the uh, top right and the top left. All you have to do is rotate the map. A simple 90 degrees. To the left. And you will have the other side. So this will officially finish up the castle. If we were to go with that. But I feel like there should be a, maybe a something else that we need to do. Something else. Let's see. Uh, maybe a... Maybe a bench. 
Uh, adding a little bit of the flavor to it. Uh, making it so that they can't initially do all of the plays in there. You can't, you can't just brawl in that area. Would they have doors? Well, that's a good question. I'd say yes. Uh, probably bar the entrance. Uh, it would not need to go on top, however. Need to remove that. To prevent uh, unwanted entrances. Uh, it could go for a more hardened door approach. But having a wooden door with steel bar reinforcements. As well as a drop bolt latch. That you can drop in like a, a large wooden thing. Stake. Uh, if the walls get overridden. They have ammunition in here. They have water. Put out fire should they need to. Uh, they've got ventilation because of the arrow slits. It's got a little bit of a higher ceiling. Then they've got the bolts, ammunition for the bolts. So, again, this area is going to be a thoroughfare. You're going to be having people going through, back and forth, back and forth through these areas. And this is where you can randomize things a little bit. <coughs> so, to say uh, the first time you've come into this area, you are immediately trying to head up to north. You go to the left or the right, let the players pick. That way they can explore. They're getting to it. This area being a through, you finding out that the defenses on one corner are actually holding out fairly well. That's Game Master. You can choose which one's doing well, which one's doing poorly. The players then decide. They manage to pick the poorly defended one. It will slow down their advance to the objective in that back middle area where the garrison post is. Where they need to run back and forth, get supplies, and all of the other liking. Um, hmm. And the side that's doing well, there's it's literally just a straight through and through. Have the players walk. Make sure you're doing uh, not full sprints unless players are sprinting. If you are sprinting, keep in mind that there's going to be a crowded area, so it would slow them down. If they sprint, there's a chance they'll knock people over. There's a chance that you'll jump into enemy fire or friendly fire. So... Running and being hasted through these corners is probably a hidden danger, so to say. Because you would always, you don't know what's going to be immediately around the corner. This is an elevated position, probably about 5, 10 feet off the ground. So eventually, you could jump up and try to get into that. If you were probably on the small side, I'd say a goblin or a hob or a gnaw, uh, no, maybe could try to squeeze in through those. Uh, if you bash into the wall, making a little bit of an entrance. A normal medium-sized creatures cannot get into those entrances. But uh, maybe they've captured one of these locations immediately. There was a, a group of saboteurs or infiltrators that have immediately gotten in, and it's taken over one of the caches for ammunition. Uh, they've gotten in here. They've barred the location. They're raining down anybody that's trying to go in this entire area, allowing enemies to pour in. So one of those situations being you have to cover from both sides. What do you do? Do you try to prevent the direct line of sight right here, which they'd have probably, I would say... For the direct line of sight. Get this. And then just inflate it. So you could only see the square in front of it. But as you go out. As you see here. So it can see three on the far side. But the first two squares you can see to it. So if you were to move in front of it. If you stand right here on these three edges. Then this guy can shoot you here, here, and here. And this guy can shoot you here, here, here. So this is double shot right here. But right here I'd say is a. As long as you're not standing right here. You should be okay. Uh, and like, be immediately shoot down into your head. You never know what's going to happen. So you'd have to deal with people coming in, as well as people shooting at you, dodging arrows. This is a high, complicated map system. So it, it, you don't have to give yourself so much work. You can completely shadow this entire area out until the player characters are done dealing with those on the walls and reinforcements to come in. Or until you've busted in, if they try to prioritize, which is most likely what's going to happen. They're going to prioritize, go to there. It's just a single shot. It's just a single arrow. Uh, the enemies will probably be bottlenecked right here, trying to prevent them from busting in immediately. Or over here, they're coming from the other side. And they would fight to the end, trying to defend this. To, again, allow more people to climb up the walls from the ladders or however you want to do it. Then with that, if you eventually get it, you break it down, you reveal the area, you have enemies in here, and you would need somebody, because again, they are still climbing up. You have reinforcements behind you, pushing up right here, but it doesn't mean that the enemies still aren't just pulling in. I mean, there's still this entire section, the enemies are just pulling in. They may actually turn one of these ballistas around and use it against a player character. Keep in mind that they're so close range. 
Uh, you may have a penalty. It tried to move it as such. You may give them an accuracy bonus, depending if you're feeling really mean. I believe most indirect weapons, catapults, ballistics, and stuff like that, fire indirectly. They may not be trained. That'd be a disadvantage roll right there. You could go for double disadvantage rules if you're using that. But they get in here, they start mopping up shop, uh, the reinforcements aren't really able to hold off as more and more troops are pulling into the top side of the ramparts. So their, the player characters are now decided to funnel in this with their barbarian, or their paladins having to funnel them in one at a time. Just staying right here, if they make a mistake and stand right here, then they get three attacks per turn on their face, which hurts. Uh, anybody who's sitting right here, the uh, archers and the interior people will probably try to uh, pester them every now and then, try to get them to turn around, try to get that opportunity, uh, get that advantage from flanking. Uh, you never know, maybe the infiltrators being an assassin subclass, having that massive sneak attack, automatic criticals, all that fun, goody stuff, I like to throw my players. So... Uh, they cleared it out, then the uh, pushing back out, letting the reinforcements get back in, and then it starts becoming easier, and they're able to hold it. That's one good situation. Another good situation is, again, the fire. I've already stated that they, there's fire uh, on the ramparts one way or another. Maybe the uh, on the battlements, uh, the standards have caught fire, the tapestry that the Lord likes to decorate. Maybe there was a festival going on. And you've got the tapestry, the decorations are all catching fire, and it's causing panic, it's causing smoke, it's causing a lot of actual problems. So, going around having to just do firefighting things, I mean, it doesn't have to always be combat when you're playing on a rampart or a castle map. You can have it be skill challenges by literally playing the role that soldiers do in everyday life. It, it's not a simple just charge, shoot, fight. It is a complicated process, and it is not an easy one. You've got to survive. You have to eat. Never mind that. That's a good idea. So imagine if you're having to run food and water supplies. Maybe there's ran out of water, and they're still shooting fire, Mongol projectiles, or just fire, giant balls of tar into the wall. That would be an interesting thing. And you'd having to bring food and supplies long term. Maybe having a lower level character party not actually able to help participate in the fight directly. But instead having them direct, indirectly participating into the fight. Helping bring supplies up and down. Having to actually give out food. Having to do medicine. Maybe you've got uh, a group of healers. They're trying to do a pacifist run kind of thing. They're trying to be just do good in the world. Uh, maybe you're playing on the attacking side and your objective is to take out one of these uh, posts that's really being annoying. It's hammering down the process and your objective is to get into there and then you hold it and the people constantly coming in. So you just play the other side of things. You have ranger people going right here. You have the melees taking the doors. You've already broken the doors so they've got to defend it. And the objective is to hold it until reinforcements arrive and you are the initial push. Literally going for wave after wave after wave after wave wave after wave of reinforcements eventually the players start feeling exhausted uh at, you literally start saying if, if, if it's a very long combat you've got like four standard people and it's going and going and going and going and the fight's taking forever then you can literally say everybody needs to do a constitution saving throw in order to see if they're getting exhausted. Or you can just go ahead and have them, if they're on a higher level party, they get in here, they start securing it, and then it's low level NPCs that you're throwing at them, and you're noticing that they're basically one-shotting it, they're not really getting hit, they're not taking that much damage. You can have them say, uh, the reinforcements are taking a while, and just skim over the fighting. And, like, they're just pouring in trying to get you. They're doing tactics. Like, they're doing smoke bombs. They're throwing in uh, fire. They're trying to smoke you out. They're not really exactly trying to destroy the place. But they're trying to run the player characters out from this position uh, that they have assaulted. So... You would then have them do saving throws constitution. You'd have them try to think of ways out of it. Maybe they're doing magical spells. Maybe they've thrown in a water spell, like a control water. They put a water in there. Now they're using lightning spells on the water on the ground, causing it to be electrified. Having players grab up onto the uh, stools, grab onto the pillars to not touch on the water. Uh, all sorts of things you can do. The memory, your mind is not limited what you can do here. But... Yeah, tons of ideas. Uh, if you've got any comments, I'm going to go ahead and end it here. Please 
put them below. Uh, if you like what I'm spewing out of my mouth, a bunch of nonsense, please leave a like. If you don't, then don't. Simple enough. Again, I love comments, uh, good or bad. If you think I'm just rambling, then say so. I don't mind. But that's going to be it. Uh, this is going to be the entire of the castle. I'm not entirely sure what I will be doing for the next one, but we'll find out. Maybe I'll start working on my uh, the capital castle. I My campaign currently does have a ruin that they have to go through. I may make a ruin, because next session they won't be doing anything, but the next session they'll probably be in the castle. They've gotten themselves into some trouble on the way several times, and now they're... The world is progressing without them, so to say. So things are going well. Uh, and, again, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one as I create some chaos for my players. Take care, guys.